Okay, let's take a look at automation inside of Ableton Live 11. So I've got a drum loop here that is going to uh, play and I'll audition that for you. All right, so it's the same audio loop we've been using in the other tutorials. And what we're gonna do is we're going to get a device called a filter and we're gonna drag that auto filter onto this audio channel, okay? Now, this is the same if you're using MIDI, you can do the same thing that I'm gonna show you. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to give an example of where automation would be useful and then we'll describe what automation actually is. So um, I've got this sample and I've got a filter and the filter allows me to basically um, either cut all of the highs that are coming through or let them in. And this can be a good way of slowly sort of introducing an element. So maybe at the beginning of my track, I would have the drum kit filtered out and I'll slowly open it up, right? But I am going to make a track with lots of different parts and I'm not able to sit there with my mouse and control each and every filter and change that I want to occur over time. So we need to automate it. So automating it is going to allow us to have this filter start from completely closed and slowly move to open over time. So we'll grab the loop and we'll place it at the beginning. So we're just dealing with... Um, the first eight bars here. And what I can do is I can show you a couple of different ways that you can quickly get to the automation parameters. So I can right click and I can select show automation on that control because I want the filter control to be changing. And now you'll see that there's a little orange line here that has appeared down the bottom is dotted. And then when I put my cursor over it, it tells me the value in hertz, so you see it says 26, that correlates with the value that we've got set in the filter. And I'm able to draw in a little dot or node here, right? So this is like a little kind of pin that will pin that automation uh, line at a certain value. So right now it's pinned at 26, but I can click and hold it and I can move it up. So we can see that the pin here keeps it at 26 and the pin here takes it up to fully open. And we can grab that pin and we can move it to the start and then we can see what's going to happen. So the filter starts all the way down at negative 26, uh, at 26 hertz, sorry. And then it's opening over time until it gets fully open. Okay. And then I can grab that and I could pull it back down. I could grab this, I could pull it all the way back up. All right, and I'm telling that control what to do. And I've got no hands. It's just being controlled manually. Sorry, automatically. <laughs> and what we can do now is if I want to get rid of all of these automation nodes, what I can do is I can sort of grab and pull that across just to reset it all. Um, or I could just click and if I had a bunch of nodes, I could just click that one, get rid of it, that one, get rid of it, that one, get rid of it. And then we go back just to pure dotted line, right? I can show you a couple more features here. So I right clicked on the parameter and I said show automation, but there's another way that we can hide or show automation and that's using this control here. And the hotkey on our keyboard for that is A. So A shows automation on all the lanes. And you'll see that we get these windows appear when we do that. And what this window allows us to do is it allows us to actually select certain things. So you can see if I go and grab another device and chuck it on here, I'll get like an EQ8 and I'll chuck it there. You'll see that inside of here, it shows me the devices that are on the channel. And then if I select the EQA, it, it shows me all of the things that I could actually automate. And there's a lot going on, right? So I could automate the device actually turning on. I could automate the device, um, how much volume it's putting out. Um, yeah, I can do all sorts of stuff. So I could just show you an example of just turning this device on. So I'm going to have the device turned off at the beginning. 
And then halfway through, I'm going to turn the device on. Okay, that's just pure and simple. The device isn't even doing anything. It's just simply going to turn on and off with the automation. So you can see here that it's off. It's all grayed out. And then once it hits that line, now the device is on. Amazing. Cool. So we can automate lots of different things. So let's say I want to have that filter, the, um, the EQ automation there. But I don't, if I go to automate a control over here, you notice how it disappears. I don't want to lose it. So if I come back to it and I right click and show automation, I can press this little plus button here and it makes a little automation lane specifically for that particular parameter being controlled. And you'll notice that that has a little orange dot next to it. It's because that is being automated. And that's what we can see there. So I'm going to navigate through the menu system here rather than right click automation and I'm going to get that filter to come back. So I'll put it here. Okay, so I want to go to the auto filter and then I want to control, yep, the frequency and I want to make a lane for it so that I can see it on my screen. Okay, and then I can draw in a node like so and we'll just do a, a ramp and let's press play. Okay, so the filter's opening up as we asked it and then now the EQ's turned on, the EQ still is not doing anything, it's just turning on and off. But that is how we can automate parameters. And we can do that to almost really anything. Um, lots of things can be automated, like all of this stuff can be automated. So you can go nuts with your automation. And like I mentioned, this is the same principle when you're on a MIDI track. So if we had a MIDI track and we had some MIDI playing and we got an instrument just quickly, doesn't matter what it is, uh, just something that makes sound, chuck that on there. Okay, and we go and we get an auto filter again. It's the exact same principle. We place it on here. We've got that sound. Show automation. Have that sound get filtered. Right. Same thing. Make a lane. Got it there. Press A on the keyboard to drop all the way, all the automation, or press this button here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back to the drum. I'm going to open up the add automation lanes and I'm going to delete those lanes by getting rid of them so I can remove them. I can put them back again as well if I want, right? But I can get rid of them. But what I want to do is I want to right click and I want to go delete automation, delete automation. Okay, I want to get rid of the automation. I want to start from scratch. I'm going to delete the EQ and I'm going to show you how to automate inside of the clip. So we've got the auto filter here and it's completely closed. So we, we only hear if, if we've got good speakers or good headphones, we can hear very quietly the oomp, oomp of the kick. If I go to the clip view and I hit this button here, this allows me to um, play around with my tracks envelopes inside of the clip. Sorry, I phrased that wrong. The, it allows me to adjust the clip envelopes. And in here, you can see that I've got a bunch of different parameters that I could select. And in this case, the mixer, which is referring to this section here, and then volume, which is referring to this, panning, which is referring to that. So I can control these inside of the clip if I wanted to. But in this case, I want to go to the auto filter and I want to go to the frequency. Oops, that was the resonance frequency. And now what I can do is I can play around with the filter inside of the envelope and then I can play it. And we noticed it's opening and then it's closing again. Okay. And that allows us to automate or modulate, for example, if we're in the session view, because otherwise there's no other way of doing it, right? So we have the frequency there and we can do it inside of here. So we can have parameters change over time. And it allows us to do it in the arrangement view for, you know, whatever reason we decided that we wanted to actually do it inside the clip. 
rather than on the arrangement view, we can play around with stuff. But to be honest with you, this is actually not called automation. This is called modulation when we're doing it inside the clip view like this, because you'll notice that this value is zero to 50% back to negative 50%. And what that's doing is it's saying, whichever value I've got the frequency set to, I'm gonna move 50% of the full range from there to open. And then I'm gonna move all the way back to negative 50, which it can't really do. It can't go below 26 Hertz, but I've got it set all the way down. So it's trying to open 50% of the way until full. So you can see that actually this is moving here and you can see it's gonna to get to 50%, which is there and then it's gonna close and it's gonna try and go all the way negative because I've put it all the way negative. I could just have it actually opening and closing to its particular point by setting it there like so. And then it just opens 50% of the way and then closes 50% of the way. So we can actually have something modulating at the same time that we have something automating. So if I right click and, and select the automation lane, what I can do is I can describe, I'll just have it open like so. So what it's gonna do, it start from the beginning. So the automation is following this, but the modulation is moving around this as well. So for whatever value we've got this automation set at, the modulation, which we drew here, is going to go from zero to 50% of that value. So wherever this happens to be along the way, so say we're at 208 hertz, the modulation will attempt, by, by that point in time, it'll be at 50%, so it'll actually be opening wider um, and then it'll be closing again. So yeah, it can be a little bit confusing to understand. I've got a bit of video on understanding automation and modulation if you want to go into that one. Um, you'll find it in my Ableton 10 videos. Um, but that is automation and modulation inside of Ableton Live 11. And I'll see you guys in another video.